Hello everyone and welcome back to another RS cast. It is the penultimate one this time. We have got the uh, predictions for playoffs next week and we do start the play-ins. So really coming up to that crunch time. But here next to me to discuss the week's breakdown is Buddha and Barmanitan. Well, how's it going everybody? I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go. How are you doing Barman? Doing good. Doing good, looking forward to the last week where we don't embarrass ourselves with a prediction. So, you know, hopefully we can make the most of it. <laughs> yeah, and make the most of it, we will. We will head to the Prospect Weekly Review. And Buddha, we'll come to you first. You picked out the Glacier side first, and obviously Oberon going 7-1 and one and Tartaros 6-2, and two, making the top 4 and 5 ever closer again. I mean, Oberon, in the last few weeks, they've really been stepping up. And obviously, they, they did play Caro, but they claimed that for, you know, they made sure they got it, made sure every game counted. But the 3-1 on Exelon is a really good result for them because Oberon and Exelon have been tight, like, neck to neck throughout the whole season almost. And this is a really good one for them because obviously it kind of gives them that advantage for that head-to-head, -head, which makes them go above them, I, I believe. But I know Oberon are very happy with this one. A player that I know, he's very happy about that week. But Oberon, they've been really coming up on the up and up uh, week by week. And then Tartaros, you know, six and two week for them is really good because they were kind of in that position where they could have, they're at like the bottom of the play-ins. Obviously, the seventh to ninth has kind of already been claimed anyway. But either way, this is a good week for them, getting that 2-2 two -two on Kindling, which is a very good result for them. And then they got that 4-0 on Gemini Storm, just making sure they made every game matter. Indeed, and it's not usually a team that we come to often, but Barmanitan, let's talk about Gemini Storm for a minute. They actually got a 4-0 versus Fearless Bravo, who went 1-7 themselves. Yeah, it's, I mean, Buddha was saying here before, because I also pointed that out, that that was a 2v3 from Fearless Bravo. They've sort of had a little bit of a late collapse here, and although they should still have play and secured, there's a chance overturn catch up on them and you know Overturn also got a, a result tonight that's just been reported in against Prelude so Fearless Bravo definitely not safe yet and they definitely got to show up to their matches when they can Yeah and one big result we uh, picked out this week Bam is um, Prelude 3 Mages 1 at the top of the table Yeah most of the, the spot, the actual playoff and play-in spots are pretty much decided in Ignis but this one tells you a lot about how the playoffs are going to go because Mages, they've been doing, they've been soaring high at the top for pretty much the whole season on the Ignis Conference. But Prelude are trying to change that. And despite their 3 1 loss to overturn tonight, if they can get a result against a, team, against a team like Mages, then they really have a strong chance going into playoffs where maybe before this result, a lot of people would have been backing Mages to, to beat them, to get a higher result than them. Yeah, and Buddha. Um... It seems to be a, an occurring theme or a pattern, this one, with Orbit, but they seem to have a really off week, and then they go above and beyond again, and then they have a really off week, and we, we're at that week again where they've actually, okay, they got a 4-0 forfeit off Digestives, but they actually beat Terra 3-1. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly why I pointed this one out. You know, that 3-1 on Terra is a great result for them. And kind of throughout mid-season, they've been sitting around 4th to 6th consistently. And with this result uh, of this week, that puts them into that top 3, pushing up. And this team have really improved as the season's gone. You know, towards the beginning, they, they're kind of a team where you'd question, is this team going to be like a dark horse in the play-ins, or are they even going to make it? But throughout this season, they've really been proving teams wrong and wrong again. And this is a team to really look out for if you're in the Ignis Conference. Yeah, and we just swing back to Glacies and bam, Exelon won 4 0, but then lost 3 1 to one of the teams that they really had to beat. And I think that puts them below them now in fourth. Yeah, but I was talking about it here. And as well as that, I also went and looked, and the only game that they did win, Oberon were playing their sub IC3. So, you know, not really a true telling of the roster. So, Oberon, I think their main roster this week went 7 0. So, really, really not looking good for Exelon. They beat Micah Faction, yes, but Micah Faction well and truly in that bottom three, which, you know, the, the bottom three have been established for quite a while. Also, I think it's worth pointing out, Bing, they go three and five, two all draw with Caro again, another team that fits well. Already been sealed. So Ving's chances at top two are all but sealed. Now they're pretty much the only ones guaranteed to, to be in play and to not have a chance in anything else. So I'm sure they would have liked to have a slightly better result than that, but they're going to have to settle for those play-in spots and, and try and make it through one of those paths. Indeed, and we just head to the 
standings now in the Glacies Conference. And Buddha, we'll go back to you. Uh, you talked about the rise of Oberon earlier. Um, up there in third now. It's, a, I think, a tier high for them. Yeah, they are climbing their way up. And obviously, they're getting even closer to that top two position. Only being one game behind Kindling. So, Oberon really going to be looking for this strong last week. Obviously, we have Exelon go down into fourth. Tartarus, they do remain in fifth, same as Bing. But with their results, they do just stay there just slightly. But you see Gemini, Storm, Microfaction, and Caro cannot make the play-ins. But I guess they can fight just to not be last. And... In a way, it's, it's really close for them to all fight for that last place of who's going to, you know, be that ninth position. But either way, they're all tied up with 19 to 18. But it's looking really close in this play-in section and even the top two. Uh, any team can still make it anywhere in this top six. Indeed, Tartaros really pushing on that top four as well as Bing. I think this is the lowest they've been for a while as well. But uh, the highest Gemini Storm have been since around the early weeks. We head to Ignis. And we'll see the transition here. Orbit skyrocketing up to third as well by Manitan. Yeah, it's a really tight table, but tight in the parts where it doesn't really matter so much. So, yeah, so it's, it's going to look a lot better for them going into playoffs or going into play ins even as third. So they'll hope they will take confidence from that, but they know that even if even if they do keep third, you know, it's still going to be a really tight result from third to sixth and, you know, not not going to be too much. You still have to win those three matches to get into playoffs in the first place. And I think really the, the other points to mention are Prelude trying to catch mages. They leave themselves with a chance to catch them with that 3-1 win, but they lose to overturn 3-1. So I think they need to sweep and hope mages go 0-8 oh and, no, and the other side of the table overturn. They're now... Five or they're now three off of Fearless Bravo, four off of Hot Metal. So there is still a chance for them, and especially if Fearless Bravo don't show up to their matches, it's it's going to be a tough one though because their other match is against Mages. Yeah, indeed, Fearless Bravo going one and seven last week and getting a default schedule for both games this week is it's very much on the line for the playing spots. And we did predict those to be quite high in the t uh, preseason standings. I think we predicted second or third by Manitan. So they're looking at just falling out of a playing spot here and we will see what the week nine schedule looks like for these teams and Buddha will go back to you in the Glacies conference good old good old Glacies well as you can see the matchups on the screen I mean Oberon and Exelon they're in this position to really fight to climb for that top two so any of their games are going to be big to find the result but the one I am looking for is actually uh one of Kindling's game uh games sorry uh, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Not Gemini Storm, but it will be the other one against Overturn. Uh, it might be a weird one, but either way, why I look at this one as really... Uh, oh my god, I can't talk. Interesting, sorry. It's because for Kindling, obviously this is a game to kind of solidify that top two position. But for Overturn, this is a really big game to kind of climb into that playing position. And if they can find a good result onto a team like Kindling, it really proves that they have, you know, what they can do into the players. And it shows that they do deserve it. Well, we are hearing in the chat that Kindling did 4-0 overturn. Oh, well, that completely, yeah, goes against them, yeah. <laughs> and it was with two sub-games as well with Pengu. So they've, they've managed to get the wins out with Pengu. I think they're his first wins of the season as a sub. It all came down to getting his 14 sub-games in, and so far they've they've won the two tonight. So, But what else can you see, uh, Barmanitan? in the, the Glacies conference. Well, over, over on Ignis, we have got word that Mage has got a, a forfeit against Limousine, so they will indeed top Ignis, really not getting a chance there. But elsewhere in Glacies, the match that I saw, there's still that top two spot up for grabs. Cardinal should have first, but Tartarus versus Exelon should be a really, really big match on Thursday. They both come in not on the best four, maybe, as Exelon lost 3-1 to Oberon, and Tartarus have gone... I think two and six, if I've got that right. So it, it should be a really tough match. You know, Tartarus have been rising, maybe falter a little bit, but if they if they can get a result here, then then Exelon could really be be struggling. You know, they came in as a as a as a top predicted team. They've been doing well all throughout the season, but this is the worst it's the worst f period of form for them, and they they seem to be collapsing at the, at the final moments where it matters the most. You say worst period of form, but they are actually going positive in the weeks. It's just that the, the, it's top, true. It's the, true. Top, the top four are just being ridiculously consistent. I mean, look at the fixture. If you were seventh, eighth, and ninth in this spot and you had a chance of play-ins, which people don't in this conference, 
you'd be looking at these games and licking your lips. Cardinals Oberon, Exelon Bing, Tartaros Exelon, Bing Cardinals, all the top teams play each other this week. And this is where they need to grab the places in the top two and the top uh, six uh, for seeding. Uh, seeding. Because they, they all play each other and everyone's been so consistent in the last few weeks. It's just been ridiculous in this side. But we head over to Ignis Barmanitan. Is there any games that you can pick out there that haven't been played yet? Well, it's a little tougher to pick out games because it's it's a little bit more decided. You know, we say overturn there, getting word by kindling. So all of the spots I'm pretty sure are decided unless Prelude somehow collapse in second. But for for those seeding purposes, maybe you're looking at Terra Hot Metal. Those those three to six team, those third to six teams, you know, to decide the seeding, and that should be an interesting one. I'm not not quite sure on the form they're going into there, but I think I think Terra have got a couple losses. You know they've been struggling to build any consistent form. You know their other matches is against mages, so it's not going to be an easy week for them. And Hot Metal's other matches against Digestives, which has not been a team on any fo- sort of form at all. Indeed, and we, before we uh, move on, we are mixing up our words a lot in prospect, so I think it's time to go to Challenger now and the Week Eight results. <laughs> And Buddha, we'll come to you first. The two top performing teams this week in Glacies, Orcus going 6-2, Scorn going 6-2. Yeah, Orcus taking a 2-2 draw onto Yahoo, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be happy about that, and obviously claiming that 4-0 sweep onto Atlas, who have not been really up there. They've been not getting the best results they're looking for. But Orcus, this is a really good one for them because it kind of puts them, it sets them up to challenge for that top two, and obviously they overtake a couple of teams, which... You will see eventually. But either way, for Orcus, this is a really good week for them. Uh, I not going to lie, I kind of expected them maybe to go for a draw week. But, you know, they get a good result onto Yahoo, which they should be happy about. And then Scorn, th- this is a really good one for them. Uh, they get their 3-1 onto Crusaders. But onto Epsilon, that's a really good result. Because I've always seen Epsilon as this really top performing team and challenger but in the last couple of weeks they seem to not be really getting as much results as maybe they look for also as you can see they did get that 3-1 onto spark but scorn do a great job of finding that 3-1 victory and it's going to set them up nicely indeed it is scorn beating crusaders and epsilon i think it was Mm -hmm. yes epsilon and uh the game against crusaders i think three out of four games went to overtime Scorn won two of them, but one of them was a nine-minute overtime, and I oh. guarantee you that some of the palms were sweaty in that one. Uh, that is the game that Crusaders actually took as well, Yeast becoming MVP in that game, and that might just hold on to that playing spot for them. I know they're tied on uh, wins with Spark right now and losing the head-to-head, but that one game could be crucial when it comes to this final week. But Barmanitan, you've picked out... Uh, pyromancers and apprentices in the other two in the other conference sorry yeah one result is those top three teams i had a look at the at my sheet i've made and the top three have been top three since the very first week so this is maybe pyromancers final chance to prove that they can still grab the top two and they get a draw against neutrinium to head into the final week just one win off of them so that's a really good battle chorus should have guaranteed first though and yeah there's also apprentices my team we get that tool draw against neptunium so neptunium definitely leaving the door open and apprentices trying to climb the way up and, and get one of those two spots and you know when you've got teams tied with you or like around the same area like fearless kilo satellite and they're drawing it's proving to be a really tight end to the season for party rings going four and four as well so last week it was all to play for this week it's still all to play for for those last three play on spots in ignis yeah, and you also wanted to talk about the Zuko gang, I think, with Spark going 4 0 against them. And then um, the Zuko gang, then what was the second result? Then sweeping Atlas as well. Yeah, I think the, the sweeping Atlas is, you know, they, they, they beat what's in front of them. Atlas have not really been a very strong team. We kept saying that they maybe still had a chance to, to pick it up, but they do not do so. And fold of the sweep there but the much more important result from this is spark sweeping the Suku gang yes they as you say are tied on with crusaders now for sixth beating them under head to head and anything but a four would have left them in a really precarious position here because now they, they leave themselves in a position where they could even catch the Suku gang if they keep this up and you know they've also swept a team like orcus so they've been getting results against these top glacier sides 
And they could definitely keep this up. No one's really been raiding them, but they seem to be the surprise package from Glaciers at the moment. Indeed, and one thing that um, Buddha did pick out from the Ignis side in the was shots that there was 6 out of 9 teams went 4-4 this week, and 11 out of 18 teams in uh, 11 games were 2-2 this week in Challenger, so caught up on draws, but we won't get too caught up on the Challenger results as we move over to the standings, and Buddha, what can you see in the Glaciers Conference? Good old Glaciers. Also, Yahoo, six games clear ahead of the Zuko gang. Just got to find three wins. Maths is correct, yes. Three wins, and they should guarantee that first place seeding for the playoffs. I see the Zuko gang, Orcus, Epsilon, Scorn, and even Spark and Crusaders all fighting, all very close. Only five games from seventh all the way to second, showing how close this conference is in this tier. And it's going to be such a good fight. And it's going to be unfortunate to see that one of these teams is going to just fall short of this playing's position. And obviously, Masai and Atlas, they can't get into that playing position. So it's going to be interesting to see if those two teams can be an upset to all these teams in the mid-table that are really fighting out for the highest standing position. Indeed, and let's see who's fighting it out over on the Ignis side by Manitone. Yeah, you're looking at that Glaciers and you're thinking, wow, this is close, and you go to Ignis, and it's really hard to tell which is closer, because... The top two are not decided yet. Paramancers, as I said, only one behind Neptunium, and that's a really, really close one. Not sure who won the head-to-head -head there, that, that draw last week, so it depended on the first result, but that could be a massive, important step. And overall, looking pretty isolated in fourth, they should have that on lock, but then you look at these last two spots, so, so close. Earthen at the bottom, they should, well, they are already out of it, but with only two wins separating Fearless Kilo, Satellite Apprentices, and Party Rings, and them playing amongst each other in this last week, it's going to be absolutely crazy. No one knows who's going to get those two spots. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be my team apprentices, but there's certainly no guarantee of that. Yeah, you talk about who needs what for this next week, and we are on the schedule. We'll stick with you, Bam, on this, on this side. Tell us a little bit more about the fixtures that you're looking out for, especially with play-ins play on the line. Yeah, at the top, there's there's Chorus Pyromancers, so maybe one last chance for them to prove it, but in this bottom, well, not quite bottom four, but almost bottom four, I feel like it's it's all about those three matches, Satellite versus Party Rings, and Apprentices versus Party Rings, so Party Rings having it all to play for, if they win those two, they should, I think they're guaranteed to get one of those spots, but Satellite and Apprentices not going to be going down easy, Satellite also playing Neptunium, and Fearless Kilo playing Neptunium as well, so that's another team that can have a big impact in what happens here, and of course Neptunium still fighting for their top two spots, so it's all going on everywhere. It's so hard to predict, and these these matchups could really could really mix everything up in Ignis. Yeah, and what are the games that stand out for you on the Glacier side, bud? I mean, it's, it might be a little bit obvious, but Spark and Crusaders, you know, in that tied sixth position. But it's not just their game against each other. You know, we see here Crusaders have Atlas. So on paper, you're going to expect probably a 3-1 or 4-0. Obviously, it could be wrong, but on paper, that's what you're going to expect. But then Spark, they have Scorn. And compared to Atlas and Crusaders, that's not an easier matchup. So for Spark, that game against Crusaders is going to be so crucial for them if they want to hold that sixth, sixth position over Crusaders. Yeah, there's something about Spark, though. They always do well against the top teams. I think they drew Scorn 2-2 last time out, and that was with the strongest team out as well, uh, Neil, Frizz, and uh, Neil, Frizz, and Swift. So maybe they'll go into this game a little bit more confident than usual. They know they can get results off Scorn. Um, maybe it's the game against uh, Crusaders that they, they might be a little bit nervous for. We'll head over to Miner now. And Bam, we'll come to you first. Uh, you've picked out the Hydra 3-1 with Yoruba and rising into second. Yeah, we've talked time and time again here about Yoruba and their rise up the table. They were not a very good team last season. They've turned that around here, but they they are now the team that are faltering a little bit. And Hydra jumping back up. They were that 8-0 team in week one. Ever since then, they've struggled to recreate that form, but they might finally be refinding it at the business end of the season, getting that 3-1 over Europa, absolutely massive for them, up into second. And you combine that with the forfeit from Concerto, and it's it's going to be a very, very good position for Hydra heading into that final week. 
Yep, indeed. And you also picked out the Toxin 4 nil as well. Um, obviously, we will let you know about the postponement. Um, so we were due to play on the Tuesday because that was the only day everyone could play. And then the servers went down at 1 nil. So Arena Tribe are actually leading that series and it will be played this week. Um, so yeah, but Toxin 4 nil, a reboss in the admin rematch. Sorry, Senju. Um, <laughs> But yeah, what about in the Glacies, uh, sorry, Ignis Conference, Buddha, what have you picked out this week? See, I, I want to give an honourable mention before I go to my two picks to Custom Creams. You know, they went 6-2, and two, they got the 3-1 on Fearless Echo and the 3-1 on Concerto. want to give them their credit, but just over them, I did just pick Comet. They went 6-2 and two as well, but they beat Overkill 3-1 and Montbelliard 3-1. I mean, for Comet, this is amazing because they've always been near the bottom all season long. And the fact that they beat out Overkill, your first place team all season long, uh, long sorry, and then beat out Montbelliard as well in that mid-table fighting for play-ins. For Comet, this is massive for them and it keeps them alive uh, for this play-in run. And I'll see uh, Euronum. They just come back. They bounce back from their difficult week and they go 8-0, getting a 4-0 on overkill. But I just want to say to everyone, you know, in-game, uh, individually, these games are 1-2 to two goal difference. It wasn't an absolute domination. But either way, you know, finding a 4-0 sweep on overkill, that's going to be massive for them. And then they found their 4-0 sweep on journeyman as well, making that fight for top two even closer. I was actually at LAN this weekend and I was watching that stream because me and Boopy were sat next to each other and obviously it's 1-2 in franchise standings. We were both uh, he him cheering them on and I was cheering Overkill. But um, do you think Overkill playing an hour earlier than the second game and losing 4-0 cost them that second game as well, Buddha? It can definitely affect the team. It, it all goes on the players individually. It kind of it depends, are they affected by it by personally? But if you look at their results going 1-7, and seven, we've not seen a week like this from Overkill all season long. So you could probably say it did affect them. But either way, you know, they've had a good lead all season long. So it does kind of cover, they do have that lead to kind of cover up for it. But either way, they're going to be looking to kind of hold on to that first place in the following last week. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are first losses all season as well. I was going to say that, but I don't want to be too sure just case. Yeah, someone said in the chat at some point, I think. So, yeah, pretty disastrous for Overkill. Yeah, we, we've seen consistency all season. Um, they've, not, they've not really been flashy about it either. It, it's just consistency, and that really came to bite them this week, going 1-7. and seven, And a comfortable lead in the table could, could look very short and narrow uh, when it comes to the Week 9 games. But we'll look at the standings first. And bam, we'll come over to you, Iglesias. Yeah, Toxin having that postponement, so they're, you know, not not quite as far at the top as they would be, but the 4-0 keeps them very high up anyway. And when you're looking at all these teams chasing, you know, Hydra winning, Yoruba won against Safari, Safari won, won against Prominence, I think. Prominence beat Ember, they're so close, they're all going between each other, so Toxin doing well to keep themselves ahead of that. And Hydra, your only risers, Arena Tribe falling, but they will have a chance to regain that in that postponed match against Toxin. And, you know, once again, well, in Challenger, it was pretty much decided between both sides, but or at least in, in Ignis. Maybe Glacius, it's the same sort of situation where the seventh team still almost has a chance of second, not really, but it's it's really, really close between them. Top two still up for grabs, and also none of these teams really guaranteed to even get sixth and get the playing spot just yet. As Ember, on 30, they're close. They could still get in there. It's ridiculously close, this conference now. And prominences rise up the table and the recent re good results could have been undone by Ember, who did have six draws in a row and then lost to Safari on stream and then beat Prominence. So they've just kept themselves within touching distance coming into the final week. And those draws don't look to punish them to just yet. They could still get two wins. We head to Ignis now, and Buddha, talk us through this one. Oh, I love this conference. Definitely, definitely not because I'm in it, but either way, Overkill, their lead has shortened down to two wins. So Sources and Euronym, they can still fight for that first place. Not so Euronym trying to find that top two with Sources holding second just so tight. I'll see Fearless Echo, 
they need uh, to eight zero and the other teams to get one win to fight for top two, which probably won't happen. So top two is basically solidified for the top three. So no one in the playing position can really fight for that. But Custard Cream's a really good rise for them. They've grabbed really good results against obviously Fierce Echo and Concerto. It's been a really good week for them. They're making their opportunity and their chances count. Uh, and then Montbelliard kind of always been sitting around in this fifth or sixth position, but they do just stay in that sixth position. And Comet, I mean, after their good week, that has allowed them to have this chance to, you know, maybe make play-ins. If they didn't have a good week, it was most likely all over. So Comet, you know, they're making all the teams above them not be safe just yet. And obviously Journeyman and Concerto, their play-in opportunity is gone, but they have a week to be a big upset to other teams. I mean, it's not often that we see the bottom teams have 20 wins. I just think that's a testament to how good this season has been. Um, there's, there's not really any teams that have just, like, looked out and just stopped other than, really, Fela Salve. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Limousine. Like, they're, they're the teams that are at the bottom and out of it, but, like, the, the teams that are getting 20 wins... And still only like 10, 15 away from the top teams. It, it's been a really great season. But do you think Montbelliard will be kicking themselves, Bam? Like, as Buddha said, they've always found themselves in the playing spots. We've usually seen them around third and fourth. But they had a chance to secure play ins last week, pretty much, by beating Comet 4 0, and they lost to them. Yeah, I have to be annoyed with that. We've been saying from the start how much they've surprised us. You know, we predicted them to finish really low, having those two promoted players in Hecky and Punky, but Grog and Tuck have, have been getting the job done with Hecky, and they've been in that mid-table for so long, they've dropped to sixth now. As you say, Comet still having that chance to catch up to them because of that defeat, and they just have to hope that they can keep it up for one more week. That's all they need. They have not ever been in a, a position that wouldn't have got them play-ins, but this could be the worst moment to do that. And we'll head over to the schedule, and they've got such a contrast on the games that they have to play as well. They first have to play Journeymen, bottom of the table, doable, and then Uranum. After the sweep on stream with Anthony carrying that uh, that game, it's going to be a tough ask, isn't it, Bam? Yeah, you really have to imagine that it would be. They'll have to hope that they bring forward some sort of momentum from that Journeymen series, and that you know they they get the result against the team that are already out and and Uranium just falter. We've we've seen them have that bad week and then they of course recover. So they are also going in with momentum. So it, it could be really really tough for Montbelliard. That three win lead over Comet will have to be enough. And Comet going up against Concerto as well. So they should have another relatively easy series where the, the other team is already eliminated and could be very very nerve wracking for Montbelliard this final week number nine. Yeah, and let's just talk about Overkill, Buddha. They also have a tough week after going 1-7. and seven. Do you see them dropping out of the top two? I mean, it, I think it's all going to go on their first series against Journeyman. You know, on paper, you're going to expect a 4-0 here, but either way, they've got to get their heads in it. And I think if they perform in this game against Journeyman, it'll give them that kind of uh, motivation for that tough game against Toxin. They, they can still hold this top two, and I believe they will. I just think they really need to keep their head straight because that Toxin series, that is going to be a really tough one for, for either team, really. But it's going to be that really big clash for first on first, conference versus conference. Kind of, They're kind of proving which conference is the better one, technically. Yeah, first versus first. But we'll see who is a bit lower than that, Bam. What, any other games that um, you can see in this tier that decides the playing spots? I think Safari Hydra is quite an important one. And, you know, Hydra, they come off a 7-1 week with the forfeit and the 3-1 victory in Safari, losing and winning against other teams around them. So that is pretty much the match to decide second place. Not not exactly the case, but they're, they're tied on wins. So it should very likely be the, the, all, the all important factor in, in who gets that second spot. Yeah, there's, I've just realised there's no point in me asking what games decide what this week because it's literally everyone. <laughs> Arena Tri yeah. and uh, uh, Hydra Prominent, Safari Hydra. Eureka, yeah, I just picked Arena one out and, yeah, you know, yeah. it happened to fit the bill, but I couldn't have chosen any of them, really. It's, it's literally everything. Mine is just ridiculous this season. So we'll head to Major and we'll pick out the Week 8 results there. And, Bam, I'll stick with you. 
you've picked out uh, Mega Minkle and Zulu going two, two and six and three and five. There's not was not really any top performers in the Glacies conference uh, this week, other than Gladiators. I think they got two sweeps again. You can always count on the Irishmen from Gladiators to get those eight oh, weeks, and they've probably got the most out of any season in RC. This is ridiculous, getting the four over Bladesmiths as well, one of the top teams from Ignis, and a struggling Zulu side, as, as we say, going two and six. They got that two-all draw with Prometheus, which they would have liked a better result in. They've pretty much squandered their, their top two place now, and you know Gladiators and Venom should have those unlocked, but it's, it's, it is an interesting wing. I think the other one I picked up was Thanatos Genesis, and that that one pretty much guarantees Thanatos Thanatos's play in spot. But you know, th there's not really much to pick out from Glacies other than Gladiators. It's it's just all of your attention is directed towards them. Yeah, I was just reading the pre-match notes that we discuss, um, well, pre-stream notes that we discuss, and everything's on the uh, Ignis side. So I'll let you take over with Ignis for now. Yeah, much more interesting stuff going on here. Plenty more to play for. It feels like is. Rhapsody beat Fearless Delta to take that little bit of a lead. Fearless Delta in that seventh spot now struggling to break back in and Dodgers and Jamie Dodgers have got some interesting results. Saturnia have been so so dominant. Their goal difference is one of the best we've ever seen in RSC, and yet they're still dropping games to a game to a team like Jamie Dodgers, ten wins below them in the standings, so it, it, it's testament again that even though this table in Ignis is maybe slightly further apart from the in the top two at least, all, the rest of these teams absolutely can still get results and it should be so, so close going into it. We keep saying it about every tier, but it's just impossible not to. Yeah, it, it's just ridiculous. But buddy, you've picked out um, the lower performing teams. We've already spoke about Bladesmiths, but uh, Necromancer's going two and six as well and then forfeit in a game against Saturnia on Sunday. Yeah, the reason I picked this one up because for week eight, this was the week where they had to get results if they just wanted the chance of play-ins coming into week nine. And obviously, they didn't perform and they didn't really come up organized for that forfeit. You know, I know it's Saturnia, but even if they just grabbed one or two wins from that game and then got a victory onto Andrew, they could have, you know, had that little bit of chance to go into play-ins in this last week. So it's just unfortunate for them that they couldn't really find to play the game against Saturnia. But a 2-2 on Andrew, you know, it's not a bad result, but, you know, if they wanted to fight for that player they needed to find a victory there. So that's the reason I picked them out, just because that was a big week for them if they wanted a play-in opportunity. Yeah, and speaking of Andrew, they're kind of slipping down the table right now, and two draws by Manitan, they'll definitely be looking to change that in the final week. Yeah, I think we spoke about them the last week as well. They've been not doing so well at all in the in the previous few weeks and two all again spawn on the table necromancers talking about necromancers last chance and then they throw it all away so Andrew absolutely would have liked a better result there which and it means that that bad result and the two all draw against Meteor Fearless Delta only three wins behind Andrew and Meteor neither of them taking the opportunity in that match to, to brace ahead and try and get something guaranteed so but despite you not having any uh, not much confidence in Fearless Delta, the door is definitely still open there. Three okay, wins behind okay. three different teams. You know, okay. it's doable. It, it's, it's not my players I don't have confidence in, okay? It's, it's just because I have to play those series, okay? <laughs> I, I love my players. That they're good people, good players. It's not them. It's just me, okay? But it, it's going to be a tough one anyway because we got, well, you'll see. Well, you'll see who we're playing in a minute, obviously. But it's just me. It's not my team, okay? Just before okay, I, get, okay. I get absolutely claimed. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one team we did almost skip and I've, I've only just read Budder's uh, pre-stream notes is uh, Blaze um, Budder 6 and 2 in Glacies this week yeah, I was wondering why I just left that one out, I was like hey come on they, they, they're they pogging up I, right I mean now. Cans diverts everyone's attention in major <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th this was really th this was a really big week for them because uh, as you'll see in the standings, this really kind of comfortable. That that does not grammar very well. Either way, it builds a little bit of a comfortable lead for their playing position, but it's not completely safe. But either way, a six and two week for them, it really has opened up doors for them, and they find that victory on the seventh place team, who I'm not going to say because I can't say it. Uh, but either way, <laughs> it's a good result for them if it comes to the head to head situation. Yeah, we will see in the table where Prometheus are and how far That's behind it. Blaze they are. So talk about this one, Buddha. 
Uh, as you can see, Gladiators, well, they've claimed first place. It's well deserved, uh, well deserved to them. Just 8 0 nearly every week at this point, they might as well. Uh, Venom being in second, not completely safe just yet. It's all down to Zulu and Megumin Colt to see if they can, you know, kind of snatch off that second position. But we, then we've got Thanatos and Blaze in that fifth and sixth position. They're not completely safe just yet, as there is Prometheus. Is that it? Or does that wrong? Every again? time, but <laughs> every Prometheus. time. Prometheus. <laughs> Pr Prometheus. Pr Prometheus. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. Yes. There Hold you on. go. Prometheus. <laughs> First okay. try. Right, I need talks. I need talks of Louis. But either way, Prometheus, <laughs> Genesis, and Firefox kind of all very close, bunched up in seventh to ninth. Obviously, the only team being able to make play-ins is Prometheus. Pr uh, yeah, you get me. <laughs> It's all, it's all right, Budder. If they don't manage to win this week, they're not making play in, so you won't have to say it for the rest of the season. Yeah, I'm, oh, I, sw I swear they finish. I, I hope they finish seventh, honestly. <laughs> I'm hoping none of their players are watching this stream. Apologies I to know, Louis is. if you are. I know Louis already is. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll head over to um, the Ignis standings. And bam, we'll come to you. Quite a lot of moves in the top six here. Yeah, it's an interesting enough week. It's the Tourney of Blades still pretty much seeing out those those top two spots, but the 0-4 loss from Bladesmiths onto Gladiators means the Tourney have the option to, to overtake them. They do so. And in the rest of the top six moves being made again, I mean, it, it's still really close. Meteor overtaking Andrew. We, we talked about Andrew's results here, two, two, two old draws. One against Meteor, one against Necromancers. Not great for them, means they do fall down. And then Rhapsody... Going one higher than they did last week. We were talking so much about how they jumped from 7th to 4th. Now they've overtaken Jamie Dodgers as well on the head-to-head. -head. And and it, it's, it, it, is, it is really promising for them. After their you know unfortunate roster situation, they, they pick it back up. They, they keep their heads up. And they definitely should be looking good in that cross-conference matchup, which... You know, might be against Blaze. That might be the team they're looking at, and you know, maybe that is a scarier proposition if if Blaze keep up the form they've been on. I mean, we say we say an unfortunate roster situation. It might have been a blessing in disguise because let's not forget true, four, true. four weeks ago, <laughs> Rhapsody and Overtake were eighth and ninth, and Rhapsody just about drew that game two two. Jack got banned, and then all of a sudden they've ri risen to third, and Spartax is farming stats over the last two weeks and. I mean, maybe they've found a better person to fit in with the play style at the play. Who knows? Yeah, better goal difference in Bladesmiths too. Pretty impressive. Indeed. And we head to the Week 9 schedule. I'll stay over on Ignis with you, Bam. Um, what are the games that you can pick out this week? Uh, I had a little look, and that should be the, the biggest one for those players in sports is Fearless Delta versus Angie. Neither of them coming in from a positive week, but both of them needing a result in that one. And another match, Meteor Jammy Dodgers between fourth and fifth. You know, it's it's all to play for, all coming down to the wire. Fearless Delta definitely still having that chance, especially because they leave it in their own hands going up against teams that they need to be overtaking anyway. Yeah, and Buddha will cross over to you in the Glaciers too. Glaciers. I mean, Thanatos and Blaze, you'll see they're not completely safe in this play. And we'll see Blaze, they, they are going to have to play Genesis and Firefox. Obviously, Genesis being the closer team, but obviously, Firefox just being the tiebreaker to the low. Now, these are two kind of important games just because these are two games that they should be winning, but they can easily lose these because obviously, only seven wins separates them. So, you know, it's not like Genesis and Firefox are this complete bottom table team. They can take games. And this, these are two series that Blaze could slip up and lose to. So they definitely need to focus up for those two series and make sure they get the wins that are needed to kind of confirm that playing situation. And then Thanatos, <clears throat> they got to play uh, Venom, which is it's going to be very tough for them. But sitting in that fifth place kind of kind of can climb up higher in the seeding for at least four players. Uh, it's going to be a big game to see if they can kind of challenge a uh, top two table team. Indeed, and um, we'll head over to Elite now. Quite quite big results, especially in the, in the Ignis team. Struggling to get words out again today. All that bear at LAN. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, in the Ignis uh, conference, but uh, Bam, uh, we look at Nocturne losing to Phoenix, and Phoenix actually beating some of the top teams this week. 
Yeah, we were talking last week about how poor Phoenix had been since their their trade with Rias Legion and bringing Wizard in, but they turned that around. We were we were worried about their prospects here going up against the top two. They absolutely proved their worth, getting the two wins, and now they're really really looking. They're looking like they could they could be challenging here. They're in third, but they're still in third. But they're st- they're only two off of IOV, four off of Nocturne. So Nocturne, they're the only team I think in the whole league to have been first every single week, but. With that loss against Phoenix, they're definitely not guaranteed to keep that. And Iovi Phoenix, they're they're not looking they're not looking like they're they're wanting to back off. I mean, Iovi, yes, they lose against Phoenix, but they they win their other game. And I'm pretty sure, if, skipping ahead to the to the fixtures, that maybe a certain top two teams will be facing each other. Yeah, Phoenix having a sick week after um, having a few inconsistent results with the roster change, replacing Snake with Wizard for that trade. But yeah, they, they do find themselves catching up on the top two right now. But also Jaffa Cakes, um, Buddha, going six and two, finally turning the draw curse into wins. They finally turn it around. And to be honest, Jaffa Cakes have always been this mid-table team who can take games and even the series onto top table teams. So this is kind of that mid-table team that's kind of gatekeeping the bottom half of the play-ins positions. And obviously taking that 3-1 on Overwatch who are kind of in the similar positions to them, it kind of gains a lead for them. And obviously taking that 3-1 onto Asteroid, it kind of kind of solidifies their play-in uh, confirmation, which I'm pretty sure it does for 100%. Uh, but obviously just another result to pick out as well, uh, Chianina, you know, they get that 4-0 onto Dogon, which is really good for them because it kind of allows them to be in that play-in situation if they have good results, and they got that 2-2 as well onto Oracles, who are gatekeeping that sixth position. Yeah, and Bamanitan, we'll come back to you. Over in the uh, Glaciers conference, we saw Centurions 4-0 Inferno, and Inferno actually going 0 and 8. They've been rising the table uh, since Fat Dylan took over on that team. What a really uncharacteristic week. Yeah, it's disastrous for them here. They're now only, I think, one win ahead of, uh, in, ahead of Centurions, the team that swept them. And, you know, I think they'll just be finding themselves a little lucky that Google Chrome got swept by Rias Legion, because otherwise there could be two teams breathing down their necks. But as it is, Google Chrome probably too far behind. And really, that last spot in Glacies is down to Inferno and Centurions, or at least it should be. And it's it's really, really scary for Inferno. We were talking about how maybe they could be challenging for third or fourth, you know, going in to the plans with confidence and being one of the higher seeded teams, but now they're they're really not assured that they even get there. And certain insurance for basically the first time all season it feels like are actually going into it with some sort of form, even getting a, a game against top two side IOV. Yeah, and Rias Legion being the only team to capitalise on the top team's mistakes this week. Um obviously Diamond Dust as well. Um both six and two, yet Carnage and Hades went two two. Uh, in both games, and Titan only going five and three bound. Yeah, lots going on there to to break down, and I think Diamond Dust is a good one to highlight. Is that six and two week really cements their place in fifth, and should be well ahead of Inferno and Centurions now, especially getting that four one for Inferno separates the two. And yeah, as you say, Carnage Hades Titan all drawing means that Rias Legion can go third and. Probably looking to, to stay ahead of Hades with that one when Hades have been a team sometimes challenging for top two. I mean, they've they pulled pretty far ahead and Titan and Carnage, they, they've been there all season long. Carnage maybe still having a chance to overtake them, but so many draws. Once again, despite Titan and Carnage's lead at the top, it just shows how any of these teams can get results against any of the other. You look at Google Chrome, you look at them getting swept by Rias Legion, and then you realize they've got a draw against second place Carnage. So it's, it's, just, it's just pandemonium everywhere. <laughs> Speaking of pandemonium, we don't usually go to the bottom two teams that often, but Chianina Buddha, 6-2. and two, Have they got a hope of 8 nil in this week and hoping results go their way? I mean, there is hope. There always is, but it all comes down to who they've got to play. You know, being six wins behind Oracles in that sixth position, you know, when you have to 8-0, and o, it's all just pressure for every single player on that side. So I think it's all going to come down to, first of all, who the two teams they've got to play and then executing and finding that 4-0. But it's going to be difficult, but it's definitely possible for them. Yeah, and we go to the Glacier standings in Elite. And Bam, will come over to you. We've already now, uh, weighed down these results and what they mean for the table. Just give us a look at the positions. So yeah, Titan and Carnage cementing top two. Carnage still having a chance to overtake Titan. 
going to be difficult for them, though. Real Legion and Hades still fighting for third. Diamond Dust looking pretty alone in fifth. They should be cemented other players. That massive fight. Looking forward to that between Inferno and Centurions. That is the big one from this side of the tier. Google Chrome and Dogon still with a chance to get sixth, but they've left themselves with a, with a massive mountain to climb, and you feel that Centurions and Inferno should be the, one of the ones to close it out and get that final spot. Again, though, we're all too used to seeing one elite team lagging behind in a table, but huge credit to these teams in this tier. 20 wins again from the bottom team. Dogon drawing Carnage recently 2-2 as well. Google Chrome drawing Carnage. These teams can get results against top teams, and it's not being a walkover by any means for any team. We head to Ignis, and we do see the one team that has walkovers at the bottom of the table there with the goal difference. Yeah. But we look, we'll, we'll look higher than that. Chianina, I think this is a conference high positioning for them so far. Maybe Bam can correct me, but they still have a I chance at planes. <laughs> um, if Oracles throw this, because correct me if I'm wrong, I think Oracles might have won or got to the final in the preseason tournament. They were second or third for a lot of the season at the start, and they've just had a big uh, fall down the table. Yeah, Chianina were seventh in week one, eighth since then, so this is their their tying high and Oracles were second in week four, fell to fourth the next week and have been sixth ever since. So yeah, these teams, you know, they're they're trying to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, and Jaffa Cakes, uh, getting rid of that draw streak and finally getting two series wins under the belt. Um, what does that do for the, the, the morale, the momentum, Buddha, uh, coming into this final week? I mean, either way, it's just going to come down how they perform in the final week. Obviously, getting a result maybe you're not looking for, it can it can demoralise you a little bit in the moment there and then. But you know they've got time to kind of brush it off and head into their next week because they are in a crucial position to kind of... They, they can fight for to go into second. Obviously, it's not going to be the easiest one. Because obviously the teams up there are very strong and very solid. But as I said earlier, Jaffa Cakes, they've always seemed to be this team who can beat anyone. It's just if they can perform on the day. And I look forward to see actually, you know, how Jaffa Cakes are going to perform in this last week. Because I honestly feel this is a good team to watch out for heading into the playoffs and play-ins. Do you think we'll see a fearless alpha win in the final week? Oh, I mean, you might you might see an 8 0 week just to brush it off, you know, to double the wins. Imagine that. Doubling our wins in one week. <laughs> all season long. Double it, double in the wins or getting to double figures would be an achievement in itself. But we had to the pictures <laughs> and the week nine schedule. And but I think Bud has uh, got ripped enough over the last two weeks for his elite team. It's the only so, reason I'm here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So we'll head to the Glacies uh, conference now. And we picked out Diamond Dust uh, having that six and two week bam, but look who they have this week: Titan and Carnage. You cannot get harder than that. You certainly can't. But at the same time, they're they're six wins clear. You want to back them to get at least some results. There, we've been talking about how how close these matches can be, even if their league standings don't suggest so. So, Diamond Dust, it's it's the toughest week of of the season for them. They just have to show it on the day. They have to get a couple wins to definitely secure that fifth spot and get into the play-ons and play-ins and you know try and prove they're worth. Try and prove that they are a team to be looking out for and can maybe cause an upset, get into that lower bracket, and really make a match for one of those top two teams dropping down from the first round. And Butter and Bam, I'm going to ask you both here: Who makes it between Inferno and Centurions? <laughs> well, I need to look at the fixtures again. Inferno have Rias Legion and Nocturne, and Centurions have Rias Legion and Carnage. I mean, what fixtures they have here going into this. It's it's tough to pick anyone to, to be favourites there from that, but just, just for the sake of it, I'll, I'll throw in Centurions because they go up against second team instead of a first team. Well I, mean, I, just, I just have to go against you. It's, it's just casting <laughs> predictions, you know? I just have to go the opposite way. So I'm going to say Inferno, they hold it, but I reckon... It might wait if they win head to head Inferno, then it's going to go head to head. But if I'm wrong and they have to win by one, then they're going to win it by one. That's that's my prediction. Okay, and we head to the Ignis, and the the fixtures that instantly point out to us here: Nocturne versus Inferno, Nocturne versus Iovi, and then Iovi play Jaffa Cakes as well. 
yeah, it's it's they're all really big big matchups. Nocturne still needing that result against Inferno to guarantee first, and Inferno, of course, needing it to keep their chances of a season alive. And and Nocturne Iovi as well. It's it's just so you know mouth watering, so enticing because you want to see which way these go, which team will be the one to get that first spot, and you know deny the other teams because Jaffa Kicks. You know, it felt like a, a conference where the top three, if if not even just the top two, were very much decided from very early on. But Jaffa Kicks changing that, as you say, stopping the draws, getting the wins, and that match against Ovi, if that goes positively for them, and Ovi's other match is really tough against Nocturne, then Jaffa Kicks could well just about sneak in to that second position. We say Jaffa Cakes might sneak in, but look who Jaffa Cakes have, Iovi, but then Phoenix as well. oh, yeah. <laughs> and Phoenix are the ones who are looking to be in second, especially when they've got Fearless Alpha as well. So it's all to play for in this second, third and fourth spot. I'm sure Iovi are looking over the shoulders and sweating, butter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Phoenix, they, they're in their minds, they're probably thinking, oh, nice, we got four points, nice. Let's just uh, think about the other series. Uh, but uh, the one I wanted to point out, actually, was obviously Overwatch and Oracles being tied in that fifth position. And obviously, if if a draw has happened here, uh, it kind of gives Chianina still that opportunity to, uh, to obviously climb. Obviously, unless one team wins. But Overwatch also play Chianina. So it's kind of a big one for Chianina because they have to hope that Overwatch either completely lose to Oracles or it's a draw, and then they sweep Overwatch. So... They're gonna be some. They're gonna be two games to really look out for to, for the fight for the sixth well, position in plans. I don't. I don't think they want to draw between Oracles and Overwatch. Well, no, it, that, it depends. That would make their it job depends. way harder. They need an, uh, no guaranteed then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Oracles are playing on their day, they're not gonna lose four zero. So a two two is the the least they're gonna get. So either way, it's gonna be a draw for the least, obviously that they want, or otherwise, or other they want Overwatch to get swept completely. I wonder if these teams are actually looking at the seedings in the cross conference as well and whether they've got a, a preference of where they are. But you are right. I think two wins uh, secures the play ins for Oracles and Overwatch over Chianina. But we'll head to oh, yeah. the Premier results. Yeah, and I just realised that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not what they want. Yeah, and but yeah. we'll we'll come to you first. Uh, the result you picked out before we pass on to Bam was Warlocks free vibe vibe in one, which is of course probably the biggest result we've seen. Yeah, it's pretty it's a pretty obvious one, but I'm a premier noob, so you know I pick out the obvious for the viewers. Uh, obviously, vibe vibe and they've been a really top team alongside with uh, Luna Esports. So you kind of expect vibe vibe and Luna Esports kind of. You know, obviously they can lose a series, but you expect to draw minimum and also the win. But for Warlocks, this is a really great result because they've actually always been this team to obviously find these results and take games on the top teams. But to find this victory kind of sets them up to even fight for that top two position. Yeah, and Barmanitan, take it away with your weekly section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is where all the moments are decided who gets into the playoffs. Five, five, and I think only needed one game from that match against warlocks to, to guarantee their spot they get it you know it's not, not a great result for them only their second loss of the season but still managing to get the job done opera gx overburn their last chance to stay in it they both draw so i think overburn technically still have a chance if they 4-0 because they've got like the the draws on the tiebreaker so if they get the goal difference they make it in but i mean that that was they really needed at least a win there if not a sweep you also see null getting eliminated from the competition by flame they needed at least a draw there to stay in it, but they lose the head-to-head -head against all of the teams on 16 wins, so that is the end of the road for them. Also means I can we... play in Premier. <laughs> that is also <laughs> what it means. It's very true, very true. So it might be an interesting result from Null next week, but we also see Mario's beat Vulcan 3-1. Yotam scored a goal a game in that one to really cement, well, not cement where he's trying to just make it really interesting for those 4th, 5th, 6th spots, because Warlock's haven't quite guaranteed third. They could still drop into fifth, but it, it should be likely that it, it's it's two of uh, one of one of Conf Forge or I, I guess Oreos Vulcan Flame or Finale getting getting that fourth spot. I think Finale can only get fifth maybe because they they lose to Luna and that that guarantees Luna first actually. So Luna will be going in as the top seed no matter what. I'm not quite sure what roster they'll be heading into the playoffs with, but it's all to play for and. You know, the results will tell you just just how precarious a position Finale are in, or the fixtures will, because that loss not looking good for them, and they're only on 13 now. They are the lowest team still in the competition. They still have a very slight chance. 
Indeed, and we'll see what that does to the standings by Manitan. Yeah, Louis also disappointing out in the chat. Forgot to, got, forgot to give him the shout out. He did get a game against Finale while he was playing, and then I think it was uh, Charlie Bay came back in and and got the other two wins for them. So well, well done to you, Louis. Really good result. You get the Luna up into first place, five wins clear, five vibrant, so they cannot be caught. See Warlocks in third on nineteen, still able to be caught. You know, if Vulcan sweep them, then if Warriors get a sweep as well, they will drop down, but quite unlikely. Flame in sixth, holding out that last spot, two ahead of Finale, and they do play each other next week. So Finale, they need a 3-1 there, or Flame will get that last spot. And then Overburn, somehow still having a chance mathematically, but all three of these bottom teams this season are all but over, despite some of the massive results they've been getting. Still a really close tier. We've been saying it for every single tier. Despite how disbalanced some of the tables are, I mean, most of them are close, but even when you are a bottom team, you can absolutely still get results against the top teams. And time and time again, it's been shown to us, it has been proven. Yeah, I mean, if Op OpGX got that roster together quicker than they had and hadn't had those two forfeits, maybe we would have seen OpGX in the top six. Uh, Harvey's come in and took 2 2 2 so far, so all strong rosters, and Null obviously beat Vibe Vibing at one point this season, so the, the gameplay has been great to watch, but. We move over to see who each other play. You've already spoke about Flame and Finale. Flame uh, Finale needing that free one to beat them. But what what other fixtures um can you point out? Vulcan going against Warlocks. Warlocks, I think, just need the one win in that one to to guarantee the top four places. But Vulcan, pretty much needing needing to, probably pro they need I think at least one to get further to six. And if they want to try and challenge for the, that final fourth spot in the upper bracket, then I, I think they probably need to win that one because, you know, it's it's looking to us where, I mean, Finale need that win against Flame, but they could well get a win of their own. Oreo's going up against Luna Eastwood, so they've probably got the toughest schedule of the team still fighting amongst those spots. So, you know, I think th those are the three important ones. Opera GX versus Null, a bit of a dead rubber, and then Overburn by Vibin as well, unless Overburn spikes. If, if Overburn... Come back from this and get that sixth spot. It's going to be probably the most mind blowing thing in all of this season, if I'm being honest. Yeah, definitely. I think they had. Have they had one forfeit this season uh, while they were trying to change rosters? I I'm not uh, too they sure. They haven't but... forfeited. No, they've okay. played every game. Okay. To be fair to them. <laughs> I know they had uh, roster issues of whether like, people were going to turn up um, and maybe played a sub at one point earlier on in the season, but they've done well to. Keep within range, but we head over to the franchise standings, Butter, and I'll let you take this one away. The beautiful franchise standings, obviously. It's <laughs> favourite place to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm leaving, I'm going. <laughs> As you can see, the top five all staying in their place, staying up there, proving that they know how to, you know, own their franchises. The GMs obviously got Luna Esports Internal Explorers climbing up a little bit. Wifey Fan Club, they will take a will take a place down tied to internal uh, internet. Why did I say internal? Internet Explorers. Uh, Ignite Forge and my Hades climbing up when Override will slide down a little bit, especially from that big AO week that Uranium had, but they still do jump down and obviously Asta. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Nice, let's go. Uh, <laughs> the, the Complex Day, Elias Academy, Shaman Esports, Fearless Esports, and Ox Gaming all staying in their places. And obviously, Fearless Esports and Shaman, one game in between them. Ox Gaming, Hecky, uh, I would love to let you have 17th, but I don't want to finish last. So I'll try my best to stay 17th. Yeah, well done, Buddha, on saying the second shortest name correctly. I'm so good. <laughs> but uh, a huge <laughs> congratulations to Forge, who I think this is one of their highest positions this season. Duck had a really great season last season. It's not really worked for him recently, but the results are picking up now. And obviously, Might of Hades, a couple of days ago, found themselves in eighth, which is Senji's highest position as well. But we head over to our guest now. And it's a, a, a lad I really like in the server. He helps us out a lot behind the scenes, and it is Friday. Welcome. Hello, hello. How are we doing? Hello, hello. I know you're a bit ill today, so we'll try and get yeah. this uh, through this as uh, quick as possible. Uh, you did agree to this about four days ago, so um, so how are you feeling about the season so far? Um, I mean, I think 
given it's our first season, I wasn't really watch, <laughs> sure what to expect, but I think we're doing a lot a lot better than my initial uh, sort of uh, idea. So I'm I'm very happy, especially in franchise standings, uh, to at least getting into that fifth spot now. I think that's a huge achievement for all our teams, honestly. Um, a few of our teams have some ups and downs, um, especially a lot of roster issues this season, uh, which we've managed to sort of pull back towards the end. Uh, and they're all starting to climb, but I think for, just for a couple of teams, it's a little bit too late. But overall, yeah, very happy so far. Yeah, so you obviously started off in Templar Leagues and IEL. Um, coming yeah. from pre-made leagues like that and coming into a draft league, um, obviously some GMs, some new GMs can struggle. Um, but obviously you said you found yourself fifth. Um, what's been your strategy to, to get in that high up? What's been your strategy when it comes to picking players, scouting? How much work <laughs> did you put in in pre-season? Pre-season, uh, there's a lot of work. And I do have to... Um, say a huge thanks to Evoke as well who did a lot of work in the preseason to get our players in um, he's got a lot of knowledge on the league which really helped out um, I think we're quite lucky that because we've been in IL for a while uh, a lot of people do know of Fort Templar even if it's not in RSC but I think that sort of opened up a, a decent amount of tryouts at the start of the season for us which is good um, and then obviously we had some really good rosters to take over from DC last season especially our uh, prospect roster with Hivers and initially Maurice coming on board as gem as the sub as well. So that roster was all set out for us at the start of the season. They're doing fantastically well. I mean, it's all unfortunate Maurice couldn't stay with us, but uh, Pure Skill just fits the team so well and the team's just flying now in that in that prospect division. Yeah, it was so unfortunate that you uh you got dehydration from me in tryouts as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a start, but he's he's absolutely fantastic and a, a goal scoring machine, so yeah. Uh, fantastic player on that roster. Yeah, I expect a shout out for lowering your PR skills as well uh, when you win it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll pass it you over. Seems that, uh, we're sniping the uh, the uh, symbiotes rosters at this point. <laughs> I'll, pa- I'll pass you over to Buddha. Yeah. Hello, Friday. Nice to meet you. I think it's the first time I'm talking to you. But either way, my first question for you: Obviously, coming into RFC, you're shown to have a really good season, being a fifth in franchise standings. If you're going to give any kind of tip to new GMs or people who want to start, what would your tip be? Honestly, um, and I said this to Jem actually uh, a week, about a week ago: is um, just make sure that you guys are like, or the players are enjoying uh, playing Rocket League, because it's okay building the best rosters with the best players, but if they're not enjoying playing Rocket League, if they're sort of um, not putting the effort in, not turning up to scrim, stuff like that, then um, you just got to make sure you've got players that are determined, committed to turning up each week and having some fun is the main thing. Axel's already sussed me out. It definitely was for me for next season, if it happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> about, oh, first of all, I'd say congratulations, obviously. And I kind of, just for people who don't really know of Fort Templar, uh, obviously only knowing them in RSC, like, do you want to tell them a little bit of like what is Fort Templar outside of RSC and IEL? Yeah, so Fort Templar is sort of a combination of um, Temple Leagues a little bit. Uh, it's a lot of the similar stuff from Temple Leagues, which is a 2v2 league we ran. Uh, have sort of come back into to Fort Templar now to continue running, a, a, I suppose, an esports team of some kind uh, for more sort of casual leagues and uh, slightly competitive leagues as well. So um, I think we've been in IEL for quite a while now. Uh, we've got a lot of experience from that. So I think that's sort of brought uh, a lot of stuff over to RSC as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we have lots of teams running across loads of different uh, leagues as well. So if you want to hop into the server and, and come check us out, then you're more than welcome. <laughs> well, that's that's a question for me, but congratulations from me for your performance so far in your first season. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, I will hop in now and just ask you a, a couple more questions to end it out. So... You know, are talking about your your role behind the scenes coming in as community advisor and just developing so many sheets. So, like, you know, where where have you found that to find that inspiration from, and and what made you decide to, to come over to RSC and and try and help us out so much with the back end stuff? Um, I guess the thing with me is that I'm I always love to see efficiency in any in anything I do, um, and especially coming from Temple Leagues, we obviously I was the main spreadsheet guy for for uh, Temple Leagues as well, so. Uh, I was always working on lots of stuff behind the scenes. Um, I can't remember actually how I got involved, but I remember just looking at some of the spreadsheets here. And I was thinking, like, the really, really great complex stuff, but we can definitely shorten some of this load down um, and give you know the staff team much more uh, opportunities elsewhere. So um, I guess yeah, just 
my philosophy in life is always to, to make everything as best as possible. So, um, yeah, just enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah, and I will I will have one last question. We were talking about it in the elite round when we were backing it up, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> Centurions versus Inferno. Who gets it, Friday? Who gets it? Well, <clears throat> coming into this last week, it was a really tough week for us because we had um Iovi who at the moment are on really good form, and I, I genuinely think they might be the best team in Elite at the moment. Um because they, they just consistently pull out really uh, big results. And I know actually last week they lost to Phoenix as well, which is quite a surprise, but against those, they've been very, very solid. Um, and then we also lost four of Carnage in the week before who we've got in the last week. So we were a bit unsettled coming into this week, but we we're a bit fortunate. Um, Inferno, I think we're playing a sub this week. Um, and so, you know, that opened up an opportunity and then we were just on really good form in that game as well. Uh, we didn't, we only conceded, I think, one goal in the series. So, uh, probably our best performance this season uh, and it's definitely given us a huge boost going into next week uh, but yeah two tough games next week but I know Inferno also have two tough games so it really is just going to it's I've got no idea <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough I mean Inferno coming in 0 and 8 so you know you've certainly got the momentum on your side yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I, I will pass it back over to Arch <laughs> I won't keep keep you too much longer Friday, but the final uh, question: Should we just give people a little bit of an insider, uh, inside information on what your role is with the community advisor? Obviously, you you don't want to run for admin. You don't want particularly want staffing roles. You you just want to help us behind the scenes. Yeah, essentially, just want to uh, chip in here and there, make sure everything's running smoothly, and trying to improve everything I can behind the scenes. You know, I don't. Not a huge uh, kind of guy, but uh, when it comes to sort of helping out with efficiency, improving systems, that's that's basically my IRL job as well. So, uh, you know, I just imp- implement a lot of the stuff I'm doing on the each day anyway. Yeah, and I'd like to see the feedback as well in the chat from what Friday's done with the mini game committee as well. Obviously, he's the one who created this after brainstorming ideas from myself and Barm. Um, we obviously it's run it's running really well so far. There's quite a lot of people on the leaderboard already but if you do don't if you do go on the game don't forget to submit your results weekly but uh yeah i'd like to everyone to give a bit of appreciation to friday for bringing these games to us as well we appreciate it we appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) and hopefully more to come in the future (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i'll let you get off and rest your voice now i appreciate Uh, it thank you guys thanks for coming on (laughs) thank you Cheers, see ya. Cheers. And that was Friday, GM of Fort Templar and one of our members of staff behind the scenes. But uh, it's time to get straight into the awards and we will start off with Clip of the Week. There we go, ladies and gents. I will put the poll up now. You have two minutes to vote on this clip of the week eight. Uh, one of the ones was from week seven. Um, it was submitted late on Sunday, so we have included it this week. But I want to hear some thoughts in the chat. I want to hear some thoughts from you guys. What were your favourites, sir? I mean, I think an obvious one is goal number two. I mean, that was just 
crazy. Definitely something that's never coming out of my locker ever in Rocket League history. Beautiful. And I mean, goal number five, that angle, just... I, I, I don't understand how these players can score goals like this. But either way, they're all great individual goals. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree. Those are the two standout goals for me as well. Goal five. I mean, that is the most wonderful redirect possibly I've ever seen in Elite in RC. It's, it's so long range, such a top corner shot and really, really nice stuff. Of course, goal two. I, I did vote for goal two. I think it just pips it, you know, being in minor. Such a rare thing to see, even in elite. But that's just that's just the way that the prominence is. That's the way that some of these teams play. And I mean, it's not to the discredit of the other three goals. They're all still fantastic. Venom with that dunk and Firefox. I think it was also another flip reset. And I mean, it's always nice to see Prospect getting on the board. You know, it's not it's not every week that they do get a clip, but they're on it here again. Credit to them all, and we'll just have to see who gets the win. I mean, I did these graphics at LAN while I was drinking bud and I was kind of bored at 4am, waiting to go to bed, making an excuse not to go. And uh, th this is when Boopy got carried to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, probably. <laughs> um, and that, I looked at this minor goal and it was like, yeah, that wins. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. A, a double flip reset into a perfect goal in minor. It's just ridiculous what some of the mechanics these people can uh, pull out. And, uh, yeah, even though goal five was ridiculously good as well, uh, you could tell the defender was like, oh, what have I done? I just think <laughs> goal two is ridiculous. And we we do see that goal two does win it with seven votes. Oh, it was very close, actually. Asteroid it's not normally that close, five. yeah. <laughs> with six votes. Third was Bing, Prospect. Well done to them. F uh, three votes. Venom with two votes, Firefox with two votes, but a huge well done to Pete uh, for prominence. If you didn't already guess it, I know everyone knows his flip resets. <laughs> but we have um, <laughs> another special one for you this week. Uh, should we show Clip of the Week again before we go into Fail of the Week? Yeah, one more time, one more Let's time. Yeah, we, got, we got to see that double flip reset. <laughs> Uh, is it not playing? I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Why you still live in pain? I'm not the one, you're the victim of your own mistakes. It's sad 
cross, he flicks into the mid, he could have just gone for a free shot there. That front post was wide open. Wants to go for the pass, it is taken away. Another double commit in the mid. It's uh, like it could be punished. Lukaku is quick to the ball, but straight off the backboard, and then it is there. Again to the mid, throwing up away that possession. Wizard does not commit, and it's off the crossbar, bouncing down. They have to be very careful, it falls, Mr. Paul, no! And Stadium takes it off the goal line himself! What?! And into free play, that's what you'd be looking to try and hit in practice, and they're going to have to find one more time, though, because it will be, an it will be equalised. I was convinced the goal was going to go in conventionally, but instead it's been bundled in at the back post. I think the poor defender was convinced that Darts was scoring it too. So actually, he just stops moving, probably in shock that the ball isn't already in, and it passes off his bonnet and in, and that's so unfortunate for them, but they are back level, their brick wall defence has been shattered by the oddest of guns. And there we go, guys. That was fail of the week. Yes, I realised I was muted. Uh, sorry. Um, I we decided to do a montage for this this week, despite me thinking there was one clear winner. So I was hoping that people put in the right choice for the winner this week. <laughs> but after watching them, they all they all are quite good. Um, Oldham Stee, I think, scoring another double tap on goal. <laughs> um, I I Ovi with the um. With the self save, but um, what were your what were you well, uh, what were your favourites, guys? Well, I think there's an obvious favourite, but other favourites, I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm laughing at too much. <laughs> uh, where, the one where Kai scored, you know, he get he gets the clear out, and then, and then the defender's just like, oh yeah, I got this. No, I'm gonna redirect it into my own net instead. Yeah, they're, they're they're all pretty incredible. I'm I'm struggling to to remember them because they were they were just so mind shockingly bad. But my brain has just immediately ejected them from my brain. So I I think I do have to have to go with with IOV as well. But I mean that they're they're all they're all amazing as as Feel of the Weeks usually are. Yeah, I struggled to understand what number one's fail was. I'm guessing that all six players were in the box and none of them scored and. World was just like casually driving away for boost and safely <laughs> got the ball away. It was kind of a weird angle to watch. But other than Axel that, Axel said he saved it. Oh, Axel like, saved it. Okay. No, Did Axel really... said Dan saved it. World saved it. Oh, World saved it. Okay. In the wrong net. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. I get it now. But yeah, I, I had probably about 10 buds while doing these graphics. So <laughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah. I, I love doing the fail of the week montages. It's just so funny to watch. Um, but I, I thought number four was my favourite, but I mean, they're all as good as each other, really. Uh, especially like the, the Jaffa Cakes back post own goal as well. Just driving, <laughs> casually driving back, not knowing the danger as well. You do have about 15 <laughs> seconds left before the results do come in. And it, I, I mean,. The trust was put into you well as well. Uh, 15 votes for Iovi so far. And it looks like they're going to win. Second is, a... <laughs> second is Vanguards with three. Third is Journeyman with two. Concerto with one. And Jaffa Cates didn't even get a vote. So there we go. Uh, Stade does save his own shot and gets fail of the week for it. Look out for the question mark Stade command later on. We will play it just one more time. Oh, 
cross, he flicks into the mid. He could have just gone for a free shot there. That front post was wide open. Wants to go for the pass and is taken away. Another double commit in the mid. It's uh, like it could be punished. And Capo is quick to the ball, but straight off the backboard, and then it is there. Again to the mid, throwing up away that possession. Wizard does not commit, and it's off the crossbar, bouncing down. They have to be very careful. They both missed the ball. No! And Stadium takes it off the goal line himself. What? And into free play. That's what you'd be looking to try and hit in practice, and they're gonna have to find one more time though, because it will be an it will be equalized. I was convinced the goal was gonna go in conventionally, but instead it's been bundled in at the back post. I think the poor defender was convinced that Darts was scoring it too. So actually he just stops moving, probably in shock. There you go, ladies and gents. That was the fail of the week. Won by stadium for Iovi. Uh, huge credit to Boopy uh, standing in in the last 30 minutes to get those produced because uh, our usual people didn't get back to me about it. So thank you, Boopy. Um, let's move straight into the weekly awards because I do think I've got an IEL match at 10 o'clock. So let's go straight into weekly and bar Manitan, start with the prospect. Let's hope we can still finish on time here. I'm sure my stream delay will not help with that, but... At any moment now, it's going to flick over to Prospect, and here we go, Prospect Players of the Week. We go straight in to the MVP, it's Buckets for Oberon, they've been doing really, really well, overtaking everyone in the table. Then, it's your finisher from Prospect, it's Hivers for the Cardinals. Your striker is ALMs with 65% shooting accuracy, your playmaker is the man from Orbit, it's Joe Yates, 22, and finally your saviour, it's Casbeats, he's subbed in. For overturn, I think it was, and you know he didn't. He got it. He got a result. He got some wins and got some saves to his name too. As we go to the challenger tier, your MVP will be Tomo with four hundred and seventy nine and a half points per game, and then your finisher will be Big Pig with one point seven five goals per game. Your striker is King Kaze, seventy five percent shoot and accuracy, and your playmaker Salt Skegger. 1.5 assists per game and finishing it up your savior will be Chally with three saves per game that was challenger and this will be minor as we move into your mvp <laughs> <It's Anthony. laughs> with, with 562 points per game if you can somehow look at anthony's car over here i'm not quite sure what's going on in the rest of the graphic but anthony is also your finisher 2.15 goals per game. Your playmaker is Pile of Dodge. Two assists per game. Your saviour is Luke Falls with 3.5 saves per game. But your striker of the week, it is Senji for a Rebus. 100% <laughs> shooting accuracy. And what a week this has been for the admin. <laughs> Oh, I mean, that, that's got to make your week after seeing that heading over to the major tier. Oh, Senzi, absolute beautiful admin, honestly. If he doesn't get admin next season, how? You know, especially with that face. He might Especially. have only put one shot on target this week in Rocket League, but he was definitely doing <laughs> more shots than that in England this week. Damn, that man can drink. And uh, he, he offered us a shot of Jaeger bomb and literally gave us about 200 milliliters of Jaeger just on its own, saying it was a shot. I'm like, mate, I used to be a barman. That's about 10 shots in one glass. Oh, <laughs> the man can put it machine. away. We thought he'd gone to bed at one o'clock at one point, and then we heard his laugh from like, over the other side of the hall at four in the morning. I was like, yeah, that's Senju. <laughs> He's the last one to drink. Well, as we go to the major tier, your MVP will be Pacey. 485.25 points per game. Your finisher, Spartax, he doesn't disappoint. 1.75 goals per game. Then your striker will be Cloud with 62.50% shooting accuracy. Your play and make a conflict. 1.25 assists per game and your saviour will be the deadly wet wipe with 2.75 saves per game wiping the ball from the defensive line not quite as exciting as minor that made your round up but still very good players nonetheless in elite we will have your mvp it's tag matter with 496 points per game your finisher is chris with 1.75 goals per game for Angie, despite their slightly last l lackluster week. They will also get the striker award for them. Got the goals, and they were accurate to your playmaker. Sakamata, once again, so many points, so many assists for him on Nocturne. Your saviour, rounding it out for Elite, will be Roof, the GM of Aster. He got 2.65 saves per game. Really, really good defensive performance from him. 
As always, as we head to the highest tier of the RSC EU, the premier tier where the most money is on the line, your MVP will be Rexo with 554.25 points per game. Your finisher will be Rexo yet again with two goals per game. Your striker will be Kizzy with 57.14% shooting accuracy. The playmaker, EG by. 1.75 assists per game. And then your savior will be Yotam with 3.25 saves per game. Pretty sure Yotam's been here week after week, no matter what. Those were the players of the week for all six tiers, but we will move in to the team of the week with something a little bit different this time. I think it, well, it, it seems to be a graphic. I'm not sure if the video will play, but either way, your prospect player of the week will be let, pure let skill let me get it up okay okay, okay, okay. Just, he's scene. gonna do it <laughs> here we go here we go just raising the suspense here <laughs> yeah it's first time you gotta hype it up you know you gotta make intensify the music you know build it up <laughs> you think you're just gonna get a standard team of the week but no you're, you're gonna get a, a a new a new little video courtesy of our media committee head mr deep signed and for it just Get to stare at these players, Premier Players of the Week, a little bit longer. The team's all over the place. Just, I'm pretty sure his name is AB, oh, by the way. Well, but my not apologies. A, not EJ. My apologies. Five, but... <laughs> Here we go into the team of the week as my stream does update. We do seem to have a black screen, but we will slowly transition it over. Your prospect player of the week. He is here once again on the screen as pure skill for Cardinals. Then over on score, and it's Swift. First screenshot of the season for him, but he deserved it, certainly. Then it's Anthony for your in him. They recovered so, so well. So many points per game for him. So many goals. Your major player of the week. It's Percy for Blaze. They're rising up the standings. They're looking to get into those play-ins. Then we have Ali. It's Ren Ren for Phoenix. Your Spanish favourite. He's been here so long. The double winner. Pushing them up. And then Premier. It is Rex. So points, highest points per game. Highest goals per game in Premier. Of course, it had to be him. All six of them have done so well. All teams trying to push up, trying to guarantee those spots. And there's so many exciting matchups coming up for you in the final week and in the playoffs. Oh. <laughs> As we do head over to the Fantasy League standings in the Elite First, your managers of the week, it will be... I'm just going to say kebabs, 245 this week. Refresh with 223. Hunter Sam, 215.5. And your players of the week would have got you those points. Refresh, 91.75. Renan, is it? Ren Ren? Sorry, 87.25. And JSW getting you 74.75. In the manager standings, Axe Loss. Still being in first for the week. 1,864. Darky in second with 1,763.75. And in third place, we'll see Archeon with 1,719.5. As we go to the premier tier of your managers of the week, Marbs in first with B Shake with 175. And then Andre in third, well, second technically, with 163.25. And your players of the week who would have got you those points, Rexo in first with 68.25. Yotam in second with 56 point five and then Alexki in third with forty nine points and your manager standings first will be Sky eight hundred and fifty nine point five second place old Hampstead eight hundred and thirty nine point twenty five and then finally Andre in third place with eight hundred and ten point five As we go over to the prediction league standings in your elite tier, your predictors of the week in first place, Sky with a 30 total and Minty in second with 27 and then a third will be Ohio with 22. With your weekly correct scores, first place tied with Minty, it will be six correct scores. And then Ohio in second with five, only one behind. Your overall leaderboard will be Sky in first with 30, Minty in second with 27, and third Ohio with 22. As we go to the Premier tier, your predictors of the week, first place will be Ohio with 12, and then second place will be your big boy Buddha with nine, and then third will be Friday in eight with eight. Your weekly correct scores, Ohio with three, a big boy Buddha with two, and Friday also with two as well. And then on your overall leaderboard, the first place will be Hansen with 24, and Buddha again with 22, and then Archeon as well, my big boy twin with 18. Speaking of big boy twin, 
we go over to the big boy games in uh, the streams this week and the series of the week for week eight was safari and ember we saw ember on a six draw streak safari were in the top two and just faltered uh after beating toxin last week and they managed to pull off a free one ember you could say but took the foot off the gas and threw a little bit in games three and four. They looked like they were going to get something from the series, but it was a great series to watch and great casters as well. So that is a series of the week for week eight, and that will be on YouTube very shortly. I mean, th this series was actually really great. I, I, I do believe I, I did cast it, but either way, it was a great one to watch. Yeah, I think it was you and Vector. Um, so great casters on there as well. Um, but speaking of the YouTube, if you go onto the YouTube, you can subscribe there. We have Season 8 Premier Tier Matches, Series of the Week. The RS cast gets uploaded in full uh, with edits of the little mistakes we made tonight. Obviously, we're trying to add new stuff as we go along and the scene wasn't set properly. And the brand new content coming soon as well. We are looking at getting stuff like coaching videos and stuff up there as well. So please do give us a follow on that. And we'll make our way to the socials as well. So obviously we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, and we are on TikTok. We have stream announcements, clips and fails, player and team of the week, and giveaways. So if you give us a follow at RSC underscore EU, we're really trying to build our socials right now, and we can only do that with you guys. Um, also, in regards to the streams, if you could start watching the streams um, or having them on in the background just for viewership as well, uh, it, it obviously gets RSE noticed more heading into next season and hopefully increasing what we've done with the Premier Tier. And just a big thank you to the Lunar organisation as well, sponsoring the prize pool, and to you guys as well, sponsoring Elite as well with your donations and stuff. So thank you very much. But I think that's all we've got time for, guys. Oh, very unfortunate. Either way, it's been a good week, as always. You know, I've scuffed my words, as always, scuffed my pronunciations. We make jokes of Fearless Alpha, and I'll see you alongside of you two. It's been a great week yet again, and it's been a blast. Really, really has. Maybe next week we'll see if my team made it into play-ins, and, you know, maybe I can be just a little bit happier then. But, I mean, we're certainly not the only conference undecided we've been talking all night about how much there is to play for in this final week, how many playoff spots are up for grabs, and it's going to be an absolutely massive one. Yeah, I'm being summoned by Marbs, the boost stealer himself, in the chat, so I'd best get to my <laughs> franchise VC very soon. Wish me luck that I get a big pad, but for tonight, <laughs> it will be the end of Season 8, uh, Week 8 recap, and we'll see you next week with the playoff predictions. Good night. See you then. Caught up in the matrix, have to keep waiting